It's Palm Sunday at the start of Holy Week and throughout this week our thoughts turn towards the cross of Christ and beyond that to the good news of his resurrection. And so we bring our worship and our praise to God today. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, throughout Lent, Christians have been preparing for the celebration of the Lord's death and resurrection. Today, we enter upon this Holy Week in union with Christians around the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as our Saviour. Let us go with him in faith on the path to the cross, so that united with him in his sufferings, we may share in his risen life. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna to the son of David, the king of Israel. Hosanna in the highest. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Some words for Pam Sunday from Psalm 118. Join in with the response. Let Israel now proclaim God's mercy endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his mercy endures forever. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvellous in our eyes. 
will give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his mercy endures forever. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Come, O Lord, and save us, we pray. Come, Lord, send us now prosperity. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt the foal of an ass and i will cut off the chariot from ephraim and the horse from jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall speak peace unto the heathen and his dominion shall be from sea even to sea and from the river even to the ends of the earth The Old Testament prophets like Zechariah had pointed forward to the time when the Messiah would come and so an expectation grew within Israel that one day the Messiah would come. I'm told that towards the time of Jesus there was a saying amongst the people of Israel. They said that when the Messiah did come, if Israel was ready to receive him, he would come riding on a white horse. But if Israel wasn't ready to receive him, he would come riding on a donkey. Well, of course, we know how Jesus arrived in Jerusalem riding on a donkey. The words that were often associated with the Christmas Gospel from John's Gospel, chapter 1, could very easily be applied to the Easter story as well. John said that the Lord, the Messiah, came to those who were his own, but his own did not receive him. They may have received him on the first Palm Sunday, welcoming him into Jerusalem, cheering and laying down their cloaks upon the ground and waving palm branches. They may have received him on Palm Sunday, but later that week, on Good Friday, they would turn their backs on him and reject him. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. There are some people who would steal anything that's not nailed down. I was reading earlier about some of the unusual things that have been stolen over the years. I read about a place called Coral Springs in Jamaica, a coastal location where one night a gang of thieves turned up with 500 trucks and stole the entire beach. All the sand was gone. In 2012, another gang of thieves in the Czech Republic gained access to a disused railway station. They made off with a footbridge that went across the tracks and 650 metres of track. And in Chile, someone stole about 500 tonnes of ice from a glacier and sold it to bars and clubs as designer ice cubes. So I suppose compared to those things, two disciples stealing a donkey doesn't really seem that extraordinary. 
Imagine sitting down to your dinner one Sunday afternoon and when you look out the window there are two shady characters coming up to your house untying your donkey from the corner and making off with it down the road. And then if you went out to challenge them and they simply said to you, well, the master needs it. I wonder what you would make of that. And yet that was the case on the first Palm Sunday. Jesus sent two disciples to get a donkey for him. And on, on that donkey he rode into Jerusalem. And whether there was something in the authority of those words, the reply, the master needs it, or whether it was some sort of prearranged plan, the owner of the donkey seemed quite happy to allow the donkey to go. Whether it was a case of a stolen donkey or a donkey on loan, maybe even Jesus as a first century joy rider, he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. The donkey in that Palm Sunday story reminds me of several things. The first thing it reminds me of is that Jesus uses donkeys in his service. And I have to say I'm quite glad of that because I sometimes feel a bit like a donkey myself. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. I mess things up and I get things wrong. But that's all right because Jesus uses donkeys like me in his service. Maybe sometimes you feel a wee bit like that as well. You don't quite know how you can serve God. You're not sure what talents or gifts you, can, you have that you can use in his service. Maybe you even don't feel good enough to serve God at times. And yet if Jesus can use donkeys like me in his service, he can use your gifts and your abilities as well. The second thing that donkey reminds me of is that every donkey can bring glory to God. You may well have heard the name of Corrie ten Boom, whose family hid the Jews from the Nazis during the Second World War. Corrie was a well-known Christian author and speaker and she had a beautiful way of thinking about that Palm Sunday story. She once said this, she said when that donkey was carrying Jesus into Jerusalem, do you think it ever once entered the donkey's head that the crowds were cheering for him? Well, of course the donkey didn't think that. The crowds were cheering for Jesus and the donkey was simply playing its role in carrying Jesus into the holy city. If the donkey could play its role in serving God in that way, well the little things that we do, little acts of service, little acts of kindness to others, little acts of faith, they can be the role that we play in bringing glory to Jesus. And one other thing about that donkey, a donkey may well be worth far more than you think. We tend to think of donkeys as very lowly animals. In the children's game, to be the donkey is to be the loser. And if someone calls you a right silly ass, well, that's not exactly a compliment, is it? But in ancient Palestine, the donkey was actually a noble animal. It was an animal associated with royalty, with kings. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, he wasn't making a fool of himself. He was proclaiming himself as the coming king, the coming messiah. The donkey was a noble animal, a precious animal, a valued animal. And if you and I sometimes feel like a bit of a donkey, well, let that be a reminder to us that we're precious to God. We're valuable in his sight. We're loved and chosen by him. So as we think of that donkey on the first Pan Sunday, Let's remember those three things. That Christ can use donkeys in his service. That even donkeys like you and me can bring glory to God. And far from being lowly, simple animals, donkeys can be noble, special in God's service. May God bless you this Palm Sunday and throughout this Holy Week.
On Palm Sunday, let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who though he was divine, did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking on the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. As we bring our prayers to God, we begin with the words which Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. They collect for Palm Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And some prayers for Palm Sunday. Lord Jesus, on this day you entered into Jerusalem to fulfil your Father's will. Give us grace to enter into your will and purpose for our lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. On this day you began a journey which would lead to pain and suffering. Give grace to those who are on difficult journeys in their own lives. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. On this day, you received the welcome and acclamation of the crowds. Lord, keep us humble and pure in heart when we receive praise and encouragement. Keep us from exalting ourselves. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. On this day the people sang praise with all their strength and you said that the very stones might sing your praise. Make our praises joyful but always from the depths of our hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And Lord Jesus, on this day you wept for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for the peace of that holy place and for peace in our own land and around the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In offering our prayers to God this Palm Sunday, we commit ourselves to follow Christ on the way of the cross in the knowledge that it is none other than the way of life and peace. And so we join together in the grace. This would be a very good time to respond by sending a little greeting to others and praying for them. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. May Christ draw you to himself and grant that you find in his cross a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope and the assurance of sins forgiven. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>